uh, please do. Now, he, he does ask, what is the typical credit score needed to be approved for a fix and flip loan for either a single or multifamily loan? Um, I'm assuming you only do for multifamily or do you do for single family for fix and flip as well? Yeah, we do. You do? Oh, okay. Yeah. What's the do. typical we do. credit score do. needed? Um, typically, the, well, multifamily um, is going to be like 680. Okay. Okay. Um, minimum. Okay. Minimum. We like 700 and above. Got it. And, 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 and when I say we, right, um, this is most lenders. Yeah. You know, most, most of us are going to be competitive. Yep. Okay. So um, th the exception to the rule is if you're doing a bridge loan. Okay. Because bridge loans are way more, they're short term commercial loans that are for properties that do not qualify for traditional long term financing because there's some type of what we call hair on the deal. Okay. That makes it unattractive or just make, or makes it undoable from a long term perspective. Yep. Okay. They have looser guidelines by definition. Mm -hmm. So they may be able to go a little bit lower. They may go 660. Okay. You know, um, but you go below 660, it is tough. Yeah. It's tough. On single family uh, fix and flips and that kind of stuff, same thing, uh, 680, maybe mm -hmm. 660. Right now, because rates have gone up so much Yeah. over the last 12 months, a lot of lenders, um, us included, we've hedged our risk mm -hmm. by increasing our um, FICO scores. Oh, okay. So where some programs that used to be 640, they're now at 660. The okay. ones that are 660, they're now at 680. The ones at 680 are now at 700. Now, how much of that is related into the deal, the credit score versus the actual deal? You know, obviously the deal matters a lot. Credit score is just you know? check your box. It's a check your box it, type of okay. thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. you're you're mainly look your core values are mainly looking at the deal, but you still have to check that box for the credit score. You still gotta just check that box for the credit score. Got yep. it. Yep. You can have LOE letter of explanations yep. for certain things. Um, but they still want to see um, yeah. And understand, everybody's getting more conservative. Yep. <laughs> Everyone's getting more conservative. So I, have to, get more, I have to get more conservative on my numbers when right. I wholesale a deal. And unfortunately, that's the reason why I haven't had a lot of deals come through lately is because the numbers have to be conservative. And when you got other wholesalers just spewing out crap and then they don't sell it because of that, um, then they're breaking them down, breaking them down. And then now that, that buyer or that seller is just sick and tired of it. You know? Yeah. So. It's all fun and giggles until you don't make money. Yep. Right. <laughs> you know, it's so the game of underwriting is like a game of musical chairs. Mm -hmm. You know, when the music stops, you still have a place to sit and mm -hmm. no one wants to be that person that okay between credit and the value of the property not being what it should yeah. the income is not as strong as it is the the rent roll was weak the operating statement was full of holes mm -hmm. when it came to the expenses okay I, i'm not I'm, I'm out right i'm out so this is not lila this is sunny harvin okay he's using his daughter's account he says, do all uh, fix and flip loans work using uh, a draw method? My partners and I can't see uh, why that's helpful Helpful if we have a have to have the uh, money up front for a minimum materials or something like that. Um, I'll let you answer that. I have a reasoning for that, but mm -hmm. I'll let, let you take that one. Well, I mean, l lending is all about risk, right? Mm -hmm. So if if I'm doing a deal where, let's say the purchase, and I'll use like an SFR fix and flip, mm -hmm. right? So let's say, Sonny, you got a deal, you're buying it for 100, your uh, rehab budget is 50,000, 
and your ARV, your after repaired value is going to be say 240. Mm -hmm. Okay, hypothetically. Um, we, you know, we'll go up to 85% of the purchase price. Right. Right. So we'll land up to 85,000. Okay. Now mm -hmm. this is where if there's a hiccup and let's say that, and that person's at, let's say 760. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, say Sonny comes in that week, we pull his credit and now he's at 720. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that may drop us down to 80% of the purchase price. Right. Okay. Right. You know, he gets down to 680 as his mid score. That may take that down to 75% of the purchase price. Mm -hmm. So okay. the, the more perceived risk, mm -hmm. right? The less we're, we're lending. But let's stick with the draw question for a second. We're always going to fund 100% of the rehab budget. Mm -hmm. You know, now that's going to be on a draw basis. Everyone does reimbursement. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know very few people that are do it upfront because the problem from a lending perspective is I give the guy the 50 grand, he doesn't do the work. So now he owes me the 80, let's say I did 80% on the value for simple math. Mm -hmm. I gave him 80,000 for the purchase and I gave him another 50 for the construction. Now he's ending me for 130, but the work never got done. Yes. That means it's a hundred thousand dollar property. Yep. I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, so lenders are like, no, you give us a draw schedule. You give us, you know, your scope of work, and then you say you're going to do hypothetically of that fifty thousand. Let's say ten thousand was the kitchen. You call and say, hey, Malcolm, I'm ready for our draw. We send someone out. They look at the kitchen. They said he was going to put in granite countertops and, you know, uh, glass mm -hmm. uh, backsplash, you know, new cabinets, blah, blah, blah. And we'll say, yep, that's about $10,000 worth of work. We released the 10000 Now we go, the inspector goes in and says, actually, he did about 50% of the kitchen. It's not quite finished yet. What was his budget? 10 grand. Okay, so we're going to release $5,000. Mm -hmm. And then that money's wired within a couple of days right to uh, the investor's bank account. Got it. You know? So you control as an investor, though, you have full control of that draw. Yep. You know, in, the, in the respect of, am I going to do, and, I, and just again, going back to the $50,000 number, am I going to do five draws at 10 a piece? Mm -hmm. Am I going to do one draw at 50 at the very end? Am I going to do mm -hmm. two at 25? You decide when you're ready so you basically you just need enough money to fund that first draw got it so essentially that's exactly what i was going to say as far as it's about risk and it's not even about the risk of the of the investor it's actually the risk with the contractor too because contractors could take your money and run right. they could they could take your money and and just never show up the next day and what what's going to happen you know right now we're not sitting here saying that you're going to be stupid enough to pay them all up front but some people have and whatever money you're out of by paying them up front now you're just down that much money how are you going to pay that up you know right right so well, you manage your risk the same way we do exactly you right. so, you, you, you should never way. I'm gonna tell you this if it you should always talk to a contractor and pay for the materials yourself okay and you pay for the materials yourself and you pay them out for labor that's how that's how you should have it right. um if you don't do it that way the contractor is gonna double dip on you by charging you labor and he's going to upcharge you on the materials mm -hmm. at least 20 percent right okay so always have it written that way um if you can just you got to keep on them to, about doing the work as far as getting the material because you don't want them waiting on you well so, and that gets to something you said earlier randy about having a good team yes right you're going to have oh, yes. good 
contractors that you know and trust you got a good relationship yep. with you know if you don't then the best ne next best thing is to get referrals from yep. people that have already done stuff you know oh, yeah. it's like the guy that had the multifamily in um, york yep. right he was a referral because he didn't have a lender mm. right from another investor buddy that did three deals with me <laughs> right yeah and so that guy was like oh you need to get to my guy malcolm you know this guy's awesome blah blah, yep. blah blah you know and so um and because he had a good experience he felt confident and, and so that that um specific client in that situation his realtor recommended another lender to him but he didn't want to use the guy because it wasn't really a referral it was just his like, bank i think can do it yeah right versus his buddy said i closed three deals with this guy and mm -hmm. they've been great and he's like okay i can trust that yeah right? because not only that but now he's not going in with a wall up with you He's already, well, he's already break, broken down that way. He's got a reasonable a layer. expectation yeah. because his buddy told him, this is what it's like working with Malcolm. Just like if, yeah. it was a, if I was a plumber. Yes. Right? And I'm not I'm using me as an example, but this would apply to a plumber, a guy that's going to do your drywall, someone that's doing your electrical. Mm -hmm. Okay, did they work out when they worked for you? Did they do what they said they're going to do? Did they meet the, the time frames? Did they come mm -hmm. in on budget? You know, yeah. all those things are going to be important. I want to say one thing too about construction or rehab work. When you get to larger projects, mm -hmm. uh, multi larger multifamily rehabs and things like that, you know, the lender is going to come behind and ask for a feasibility study. Okay. Okay. And what a feasibility study is, you you tell me I'm putting in two hundred thousand dollars, and let let's say you're doing. 10 units you're going to rehab 20,000 a unit mm -hmm. okay the feasibility study is going to look at your scope of work and say based on the improvements you're making is it reasonable it's going to cost two hundred thousand dollars and is it feasible they're going to put in again you know granite and yep. bamboo and blah 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 and they're going to do that for three thousand dollars yeah mm. and that can be, so you don't really have that when you're doing most like sfr mm -hmm. rehabs but when you get to commercial industrial and and multi-family yeah um you will have feasibility reports they're going to double check your numbers and it so, won't be a lending guy doing it. it's going to be a construction guy right with that. so that brings me up to this next question that michael brought up what would be uh, the minimum DCR on a multifamily deal? Um, DCR is debt service coverage ratio, mm -hmm. yep. right? So uh, that's the gap between the payment and the net operating income. Yep. Okay. So using a, you know, again, a, let's say I had a multifamily and after expenses, after uh, you know, taxes, insurance, maintenance, property management, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm netting $8,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my debt service is $4,000 a month. Okay. Yep. So that ratio is actually 2.0. Okay. Right. Yep. And so if I was doing, let's say, and I use a house, for example, if my payment was a thousand bucks, and my net operating was twelve hundred dollars. Now I'm at a one point two. Okay. Okay. One point two is going to be typically your minimum. Okay. For most um, uh, uh, underwriting guidelines, with most lenders, you okay. will have risk factors that can move that number though. Okay. Okay. So if a guy's at, uh, let's say he's got low experience. Yeah. You know. So we're we're really. You know, and in the six C's, we're testing his his, his capability is low. Mm -hmm. Then we may say we need to see a one point two five, okay, on that deal, or the location is a little hanky. Not hanky mm -hmm. enough, we won't do it, but hanky enough to make us a little nervous. We're going to make sure it's got a one point three on the debt surface. 
Got it. Right. Okay. But all things being equal, 1.2 yep. should be reasonable. If you're doing commercial, uh, retail, industrial, office, mm-hmm. that kind of thing, you're going to be looking at a 1.3. Okay. As a you know, minimum. At a minimum, so we'll wing us up to a 1.35. Okay. 